So a while ago, I made a tutorial on how to animate like a creator called Inside Geopolitics. He has a really unique style where rather than showing everything on a 2D map, like most creators, he shows everything in the world on a 3D globe. This is a great way to show information because the most commonly used 2D projection of the world map, called the Mercator projection, stretches countries towards the northern and southern hemispheres and can also give some unusual interpretations, like the idea that Greenland is almost as big as Africa and that America is far away from Russia. This tutorial did quite well actually, and as it happens went on to become my most viewed video across both my channels. In that tutorial I used as the basis for my map this paid After Effects composition called 3D Earth Connections. It comes with a lot of really good time-saving features, like the ability to highlight certain countries and to also connect certain areas of the world with 3D lines. If you want to check that out, then I'll link my affiliate link to it in the description below. There are a lot of people in the comments asking for a free version of this, so that's what this tutorial today is. I'm going to show you how to build up a 3D comp like this from scratch. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go online and we're going to get a few files in order to build up our globe. As I explained as well in my last tutorial, in order to make a 3D globe, you need something called an equirectangular projection. This is because on a standard Mercator projection, when you unwrap the map off the globe, it stretches things on both the X and the Y axis. Whereas on the equator rectangular projection, it only stretches things on the X axis. This means that it's much easier for the computer to wrap this back into a three dimensional globe. So the first thing we're gonna need is some surface imagery of the earth. And to get this, we're gonna go over to my favorite website. NASA Visible Earth, of course. And we're gonna select this collection called Blue Marble. We're then gonna pick one of these. You can pick pretty much whichever you want as they all look largely the same. And we're gonna click one of these here. Make sure to get the one with that resolution there, not one of these square ones here. So we'll click on that, open it up, hit download, and then just do right click and then save image as and download it there. So this is our imagery, but we're gonna need a few other layers in order to build up our globe. So we're gonna to go to this website called Solar System Scope. There we go, click there. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna to go to textures. So there's a bunch of other planets here, but we're gonna scroll down to Earth and we're gonna download each of these apart from Earth Day Map as we got that from NASA Visible Earth. I'd recommend doing it in 8K as this will allow us to zoom in closer to the globe before it pixelates. If you've got a slow system, however, you can download it in 2K and then swap this out at the end for the final render. So we'll click download on each and then we're gonna save these locally. We're also gonna Google Equi Rectangular Projection with Border. And we're gonna come over to Wikipedia and we're gonna grab one of these files here. Uh, which one is it? That one will do. Again, save image as. This will come in very handy later. Lastly, I'm just gonna grab a logo of some sort for use in our later animation. For my personal example, if you want to follow along, I'm gonna use one of the African Union. So I'm just gonna come and grab a PNG for this, but of course you can use whatever. You can use the EU or any country flag. Lastly, we need one last thing from the internet, which is to go over to this website called Video Copilot and get their free plugin called VC Orb. This, if you've ever used it before, is basically After Effects Spherize effect, but on steroids. So it's well worth having. I'll be linking to everything I've used down in the description. So if you want a shortcut, then check that out. Right, so now we've done all that, we're gonna head over to After Effects and we're gonna set up a new standard 16 by nine comp. We're gonna drag in a lot of those files that we downloaded earlier, except for the African Union logo and the one with the borders as we don't need them yet. So that, 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 and that. In they go. Now these are very big files, so you'll see they'll pop up really big like that. We're just gonna do Control Alt F, which is gonna shrink them all down to the size of the composition. Now you should see, if I select them all individually, that they all should line up because they're the same equirectangular projection. Now, is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new solid layer 
And I'm going to call this, ooh, look at his orbs. You've got to be British to get it. Check out his orbs. So you see we now have this blank orb in the center. We're going to set the radius to 500 to big that up a bit. So to start building up our globe, we're going to have to use a number of these map layers. Now, just to make things a bit easier, I'm just going to quickly go in and I'm going to rename some of them. So this top one, specular, I'm just going to call gloss. Uh, next, this one, the clouds, I'll just call clouds. Uh, the nighttime map, I'm going to call illumination. Uh, this one here, I'm just going to call terrain. And then this last purple one here, I'm just going to call normal. Right, so first of all, the terrain layer, I'm just going to pre-compose this because that's going to come in handy later. So do that there. I'm just going to turn this back on. Now under the VC orbs effect, you'll see we have this drop down called maps. Now the diffuse layer, we're just going to link to the terrain layer and you'll see we now have the starters of our globe. Next, for the bump layer, we're going to select normal. Now this, uh, because it's what's called a normal map, we're going to select this checkbox here and we're gonna set the intensity to about three, although you can have a play around with this for yourself. This basically just gives the globe a bit of three dimensional depth so that it doesn't look like a perfect polished sphere. Next, we're gonna select our gloss layer. This is basically just to give reflectivity to the earth. But you'll see if I come in and select this gloss now, it gives perfect reflectivity to the ocean and then if we rotate it, it gives no reflectivity to the land, which isn't exactly natural. So is what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come down and I'm going to, to pre-compose together the gloss and the clouds layer. Pre-compose, call this gloss. We'll go into our new pre-comp, turn them on, and then we're going to use what's called a multiply effect here over the top. So they're kind of blended together now. And then lastly, you might want to come into the opacity and just change the opacity of the clouds layer until this looks sort of about right. And then we're going to come back into the comp. We're going to go over to our orbs comp and we're going to select again our new gloss pre-comp. Next, to give ourselves some nice city lights in the shadow night side of the earth, we're going to use this layer called illumination. But you'll see that at the moment you can actually see quite a lot of the globe other than just the city lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this on itself. We're going to go in, we're just going to apply a Lumetri effect and then pretty simply we're just going to crank the contrast all the way up to the top and then drop the blacks all the way down to the bottom and that will have this isolating effect of showing only the city lights. We'll then go back into our main comp, select our orbs layer and under illumination select that illumination pre-comp. And then lastly we need to come up here and we need to turn up the intensity of the illumination like that and you can also play with the color of it as well so maybe let's make it a slightly warmer orange there we go that's nice now as you'll have seen from watching inside geopolitics he does all his globes as black and white so i'm going to come into our terrain layer and then i'm just going to simply apply a black and white effect to this now of course you can have a play around with the parameters in order to achieve a look that you like I quite like it is as it is. I'm also going to copy that and I'm just going to drop this onto the illumination layer as well. And there we go. Uh, the sunlight's a little bright at the moment, obscuring some of the land. So I'm just going to come back into my gloss layer and I'm going to maybe drop that down to about 40. There we go, that looks much better. Then I'm just going to add a light. I'm going to make this a parallel light. We'll set the intensity to about 100. And I'm just going to move this over here and I'm going to sort of play around with the angle and the direction of the light until I find a look that I like the look of. And then I'm going to create another light. We're just going to make this a dim ambient light, which is going to have the effect of filling in this other side of the globe here. Maybe I'll drop down the intensity on that. Now, pro tip, if you were to use that 3D Earth Connections comp, which I mentioned earlier, there's a shortcut there to automatically draw on any country you want. But if we're going to do it ourselves, there's a quick aid that we can do it with. 
So we're going to open up our terrain pre-comp. We're going to come over to our files and we're going to drop in that equirectangular projection with the borders that we grabbed earlier. That's there. Control Alt F to scale it up. And then we're going to apply two key light effects. One key light effect is going to take away the ocean, which should all be one color. And then again, another one. And this time we're going to take away the land color which is going to leave us with this border here. So you see now we have these gray borders here. And then if you want to make it a little bit more visible, we can add a fill color. Now is what you can do is for instance, you could go around, draw out your own shape layer and then hide this away when you want to. Now we're going to start building up our animation. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be highlighting the African Union in my example. So is what we want to do is we want to go back into our terrain thing again. We want to take this uh, comp here with the borders and we're going to duplicate that. Now is what we're going to do is we're going to lose that second key light effect. So all the lands are going to be filled back in. Um, I'm going to make, I want to make Africa dark green. So we're going to come down to the fill and we're going to pick out a color there that we feel is appropriate. There we go. And then we're just going to draw a mask around the African continent now. And then we're just going to set a blend mode with this as well. So I'm going to change this to uh, overlay looks great. So we'll go back to the comp and there's Africa highlighted in green. One last thing I'm just quickly going to do to this as well is I'm going to add a flicker at layer in effect, which is going to make it do this at the beginning, which will be a nice intro to the animation. Now, if you watch Inside Geopolitics, one quite distinctive thing he does is as he rotates the globe, certain logos and things that appear above the globe will often have a certain level of parallax as if they're actually sat above the globe itself. So how are we going to achieve this effect? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new solid layer. And I'm going to call this Orb Overlay. And then I'm going to come up to the project panel and I'm just going to create a new blank composition. And I'm going to call this Overlay as well come back into the comp. Cool. Now is what I'll do is I, again, I will apply the VC orb effects to this overlay layer. Now we're going to want to set the radius is slightly bigger than our base globe so that we can achieve that parallax. So let's just make this about 520. The other one was 500. So you'll see that this will now pop up and cover the whole globe. I'm then going to drag that overlay comp down into the main composition. And then on our overlay, I'm just going to come over to the effects, go maps, diffuse, and then I'm going to select this blank overlay layer. So it should disappear. There we go. Then is what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we're going to open up our overlay orb and the standard base. Oh, look at these orbs comp. And we're just going to make sure that we've pick whipped the position to the position there, rotation X to rotation X, rotation Y, to rotation Y and rotation Z to rotation Z. Now this means that as you animate the comp from the oh look at his orbs comp that they will move together. You have to make sure to do this. Now don't make the mistake of controlling it from the overlay layer. So you could even lock this off. Now if you want anything to appear on the surface of the earth without this parallax like Africa highlighted there you need to do it within the terrain layer. If you want to achieve this parallax, you need to do what we're going to do now and do it in the overlay layer. So we come into an overlay. Now I'm just going to drop in the surface imagery of the earth into this. We'll do control alt F. Now we're going to be hiding this later. This is just so we know where we're positioning what. So I'm going to bring in my African Union logo. It's there. Shrink it down and position it where I would like it over the continent of Africa like that. Now I'm just going to make a quick little intro animation for this logo just to add some dynamic movement to the animation. So I'm going to pre-compose this. There we go. Now I'm just going to duplicate this three times. Um, with the left hand side, let's highlight a mask around the laurel there and we can have this coming in on a simple rotation animation. Make sure that the anchor point is directly central 
to the animation when doing that. Cool, so we'll go to the end position that we want it to meet first, which would be there, hit R, press the key there, and then rotate this round underneath like that. And then we're gonna come up to this one. We're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna isolate off the laurel. We're gonna hit R again, and we're gonna basically do exactly what we did earlier. Set the end position, and then set the start position with it rotated underneath like that. And then the main central bit, we're gonna take those masks and we're gonna apply them to there. Mask, copy, paste there. We're gonna make sure only that's central. We're gonna set the masks on this one to subtract. So you see that it all should add together to create the main logo. We're gonna hit S for scale. Uh, and then we are going to, again, uh, set a keyframe at the end point and drop this down to zero. Uh, we're going to select all those keyframes and we're going to create a quick ease in. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Maybe shorten them a bit. It's a bit of a slow animation. I'm just going to increase the size of this composition slightly because you see it's cropped off at the bottom there. But there we go. That's I like that. I'm going to come back over into our overlay comp. We've got a nice animation coming on there. And then I'm just going to apply a quick drop shadow to this because that effect makes everything look better. Bit of distance, bit of softness. There we go, ideal. Right, now let's turn off the base uh, map there, come over into our main comp, and there we have that. Now, lastly, on the all look at his orbs comp, we can twirl down and we can start actually using these parameters, animate our globe. So what I'm going to do is, I think that's the end position. So I'll put that there. And then I'm going to have this rotate in. And then I'm going to create an easy ease. So I want a bit of a snap on this rotation animation. So I'm going to come keyframe assistant, ease in. And then we'll go to the graph editor. And just sort of, there we go, push it out a bit like that. Cool. One last thing, if you've got an Envato element subscription, or something like that, it might be worth looking for a slight dust particles effect because I notice he sometimes has that on top as well. But that is our animation. If you've got any questions, please do leave them down in the comments. And if you want to talk to me about a job, then I've also got a Google form down in the description which you can fill out. Thanks for watching.